Greetings everyone, Mad Mike here, back with another installment of 32 Manias of Mike. Um, we are moving this party north, ladies and gentlemen. We are going up to Canada. We are going up to the Great White North, to Toronto specifically, in the Sky Dome for WrestleMania 6. Now, um, most of you guys know this. Mania for the main event. It's the ultimate challenge. Uh, the Ultimate Warrior, the Intercontinental Champion, going up against Hulk Hogan, the WWF Champion. Obviously, title for title. Uh, if you've ever seen a wrestling gift before in your life, it's probably the one from this match with Hogan and Warrior and the test of strength. And, well, to be honest, it looks a little awkward. But uh, <laughs> but uh, that's not what we're here to talk about just yet. We're going to get there eventually, I promise. But... Uh, Let's kick it off as we do. We had 67,000 people here in the Sky Dome, um, the second largest attendance for a WrestleMania so far. And the first time we don't have some sort of American anthem kicking off the show, we got Robert Goulet singing O Canada. And man, he is spectacular at it. Um, I don't know if he beats Ray Charles or Aretha Franklin yet, but, you know, he's Robert Goulet. Obviously, he he performed at Bart's Casino. So, if you got that reference, congratulations. If you didn't, just look up things. Um, but let's uh let's move it along, as I do on these manias to the card. It's a stacked card. It's a big big card. Another three and a half hour pay per view. Um. So really, when WWE moved to four hours, they weren't enhancing. They're really kind of going back to their roots a little bit. It's hard. It's odd to say that, but it's pretty much what it is. But uh, the first match, we have the model Rick Martel, full shades, the scarf, the arrogance. He's got everything going, and uh, he had a quick match with Coco Beware, and beat him pretty handily because Rick Martel is just starting his singles run and oh man i very excited about this because we're almost at the time where i started watching wrestling and i'm getting a lot of uh fuzzy memories from back when i was a kid uh but the next match we got is a tag team championship match uh yeah tag titles defended a little early in the card i think this might be the biggest gap between title matches we've ever had at WrestleMania. Because there's about almost 10 matches between one title match and the other. But yeah, uh, we had Demolition going up against the Colossal Connection of Andre Giant and Haku. And this is, I think this was Andre's last WrestleMania. Um, he was not involved in the match that much. Haku did most of the work. And it led to Demolition getting the win. Uh, Andre, of course, did the spot where he gets caught up in the ropes because that's Andre. That's how he rolls. Um, but after, I think we got a WrestleMania first here. We actually have a face turn at WrestleMania because Bobby Heenan is playing Andre Giant for the loss. And, and, and Andre is like, fine, fine, fine. It was my bad, my bad, whatever. Then Bobby Heenan makes the mistake of slapping Andre the Giant in the face. Um, you don't want to do that. You let the Wookiee win. That's pretty much how that works. And Andre a Giant attacks Bobby Heenan, attacks Haku, and Andre leaves as a face. It's amazing. It's really, really good. Um, there's even a follow up later where Bobby Heenan delivers one of his most famous lines ever. It's like. You run with me, you go to the top. You don't run with me, you're never heard from again. If you saw the Bobby Heenan DVD, you know that line is front and center. And I forgot he was talking about Andre. It's amazing. It's amazing to get the recall, the recall like that. But yeah, uh, WrestleMania first. I think we got the first face turn at WrestleMania here. Um, next match, we had a lot of quick matches here, to be honest. Uh, we have Earthquake against Hercules, and I'll be honest, kind of a forgettable match, a little bit of a squash, pardon the pun, with Hercules, uh, with Earthquake, I mean. But yeah, um, Earth. it's nice to see Earthquake, though. This is around the time when Earthquake's getting a lot of the big rub, like 
going after Hogan, going after Warrior, stuff like that. Unfortunately, it never culminated at a WrestleMania match. But um, actually, in the build-up to uh, Warrior and Hogan, you get to see a lot of Earthquake doing Earthquake-like things, which is great. Um, but next is is interest is an interesting match. It's Bruce the Bar Beefcake, who has his full music and entrance and everything now, going up against Mr. Perfect with the genius in his corner. Um, and guys, this is a trivia question answer. It really is. Who was the first person to hand Mr. Perfect a loss on television or pay-per-view? That's correct. It is Brutus the Barber Beefcake. Never would have guessed that in a million years. I guess it pays to be friends with Hulk Hogan. Um, yeah, very, very odd. I did not expect Beefcake to win, but who knows? I, I guess anything's possible in WWF. That's what they say, right? Uh, but but next, before I get into this match, we have a little backstage segment. Now, this is a this is also another WrestleMania first. Um, it's the first return from retirement. Yeah, first return from retirement because Rowdy Roddy Piper. You remember Rowdy Roddy Piper? He was at, he was at the last WrestleMania. He did the whole Piper's Pit segment. You remember from a couple of years a couple of years back, he uh, was fighting uh, Butch Reed or. Oh, I forget. No, it wasn't Butch Reed. It was, um, no, it was Butch Reed. It was Butch Reed. And he said, you know, I don't have to paint my face. I don't have to shave my head. Um, so Roddy Piper has a segment because he's going up against Bad News Brown tonight. And Roddy Piper, um, he's painted half his face brown and his arm. Um... Again, this was 1990. Things were a little different back then. Still a little weird. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Roddy Piper had a very interesting promo with Mean Gene. Um, I, I, he called himself two different things. One was Hot Rod and one was like Slick Rick. I don't know. It was something like that. It was very weird. Uh, I'm sure the promo is somewhere online. Just type up Roddy Piper WrestleMania. I'm sure it'll come up. But um, and it's funny because the the promo kind of amounted to nothing because Roddy Piper and Bad News Brown fought to a WrestleMania staple double count out where they kind of just beat the crap out of each other. Yeah, uh, WrestleMania is still not necessarily giving all finishes, although. Uh, there are only two like that on this one. There, there's no other DQs or anything like that. But still, it's a little disheartening because I, like, I saw that promo. I was actually kind of looking forward to the match, and it's just beat up, beat up, beat up. Um, speaking of beating up, uh, we, <laughs> I, I, for all right, right here, I have to stop and talk about Steve Allen. Steve Allen is the major celebrity for this WrestleMania. He's fantastic, honestly. I really, really dug what Steve Allen was doing. He, he had a couple backstage segments with wrestlers. Um, in fact, I'm going to say right now, Steve Allen is probably my favorite WrestleMania celebrity. Uh, he had a backstage segment with the Bolsheviks in the locker room showers where, uh, where Nikolai Volkov is practicing singing. And Steve Allen's giving him some piano riffs. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it before, you need to find it. And Steve Allen, Steve Allen also has a back, backstage skit later with Rhythm and Blues with uh, Honky Tonk Man Greg Valentine. Really, really great. And uh, he's on commentary for that match, too. He's not terrible. He's fine. But you can tell he's, he's a showman. You can tell he knows what he's doing. And... Uh, so the Bolsheviks, they're coming out uh, for this next match, and they're going up against the Hart Foundation. Now, this is a WrestleMania first. Bret Hart is fully in face mode. He gave his sunglasses out to a kid. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is the Bret Hart I'm a bit more accustomed to seeing. The shades were still silver. He hasn't gone full pink and black yet. But um, 
yeah, it was it was fun to see that first time at WrestleMania. I see that, but uh, this continues a, a tradition of WWE faces being assholes because the Bolsheviks are singing the Russian national anthem, um, and Bret Hart and Neidhart just attacked them from behind, hit the heart attack real quick, and the match is super short. It's nineteen seconds. Nineteen seconds. Yeah, um, I believe this is also on the road to the Heart Foundation going up against Demolition eventually because they said they ha- they wanted the next tag title shot from whoever won. So, interesting way to build that. Um, but the next match, the Barbarian, who who's fun, um, with Bobby Heenan, of course, going up against Tio Santana. Now, the match is totally fine. Uh, Tito, they, they point out Tito's been at every WrestleMania, which is true. Um, very few guys to do that at this point. I think Tito and Hulk Hogan might be the only ones to have been there for all of them so far. Maybe Hercules. I'm not positive on that. But, oh, actually, probably Andre, too. Yeah, An- Andre, but I don't, th- Andre wasn't booked in a match, I don't think, at WrestleMania 5. So, you know, there, there's a few guys there, but it's not... Tito lasts pretty long as far as consecutive WrestleManias go. But um, it's a bit disheartening because there's a lot of commentary here where Jesse Ventura sounds like a horrible racist. Uh, just a lot of things about... I mean, he calls Tito Chico, which is fine. We all We all have gotten used to that at this point because he's been doing it ever since Tito Santana wrestled. But the commentary here is a little rough. But, uh, yeah, Barbarian beat Tio Santana. And, yeah, I mean, you know, it was a match. Nothing really too crazy about it. But the next match we have is yet another WrestleMania first. And uh, before the match, we get a couple backstage segments with Macho King Randy Savage and Queen Sensational Sherry talking about their opponents, Dusty Rhodes and Three Sapphire, if you will. Uh, yeah, WrestleMania's first ever mixed tag team match. And it's great because Dusty Rhodes, like, Dusty Rhodes says that um, the Macho King is not a king because Dusty Rhodes has the crown jewel. And we don't know what that means yet, but we will. We will find out. Uh, before the match, Dusty Rhodes cuts a promo and basically says the same thing. And then he brings out Miss Elizabeth. And Miss Elizabeth, this is clearly a different Miss Elizabeth. She's actually out to, she helps interfere in the match. And this match is really fun. Like, Sapphire, bless her heart, was not a wrestler. Uh, But Sherry is such a pro. Sherry made Sapphire look like a million bucks, and so did Macho Man. Uh, j- honestly, watch this match. This match is super, super fun. Uh, you know, now that I'm thinking of it, it might be my favorite match on the card. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it is. I'm going to say it is my favorite match on the card. Macho Man and Queen Cherry versus Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire. I'm going to say that. And that may be sacrilege to a lot of people, but damn it, I had fun watching this match. And Miss Elizabeth helps Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire win. So uh, the king and queen are deposed, and Dusty and Sapphire get to rock out with Miss Elizabeth. It's a, it's a it's a good moment for everyone. Um, the next match is we get the Orient Express, uh, Sato and Pat Tanaka, against Mister WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels, and his tag team partner Marty Jannetty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a fun match. I mean, it's a little bit more high pace, which is good. The Orient Express can keep up with the Rockers, which is nice to see. But again, Shawn Michaels, you know, for someone touted as Mr. WrestleMania, he lost his first two matches at Mania because the Rockers get defeated by the Orient Express here thanks to Mr. Fuji's interference. I mean, still, fun match. Fun match. It was good to see it. But yeah, it's kind of interesting because I know we're not too far away from the barbershop incident. I think there may be maybe one more mania with the Rockers. 
maybe. I'm not positive, but I know it's coming. I know it's coming. That train's never late. Um, but moving moving on, we go now. These next three matches, I'm gonna say, almost killed the crowd um, because we have a WrestleMania first. No, not in this match, actually. We'll say I'll say it for the next match. Um, the next three matches are really, really weird. Because remember, we're in Canada. And the next match is Canadian Strongman Dino Bravo against American Patriot and possibly brain-damaged Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Now, Hacksaw comes out waving the American flag and tries to get a USA chance started. We're in Canada. That doesn't work. Granted, not that anyone's cheering for Dino Bravo either. Um, it's a really short match. Hacksaw eventually, you know, gets the crowd behind by just screaming "ho" repeatedly, which you know everyone loves doing that. And Hacksaw gets the win over Dino Bravo, and then gets his ass beat by Earthquake afterwards. So, yay! It's honestly a really it's a t- it's a tough match. It's weird, but um, speaking of tough, and I, oh, I wanted to love this match. I really did. I wanted to love this match. The million dollar man Ted DiBiase puts his million dollar championship on the line against Jake the Snake Roberts. I really wanted to love this match. I wanted to love it so much because I love these two guys. It's very meh. It's like it's a lot of rest holds, and this is where we get a WrestleMania first. The first asshole crowd. Yeah, yeah, the first asshole crowd ever. Shocker that it's Toronto, right? Um, why are they an asshole crowd? And it's not, you know, it's not even the crowd at WrestleMania to a chant bullshit. That's not being an asshole crowd. This crowd. During Ted DiBiase and Jake Roberts did the fucking wave. They did the wave during that match. Granted, I I know DiBiase and Jake weren't exactly lighting the world on fire with the match. And I know we're already almost two hours deep into this WrestleMania, if not a little bit over. So, you know, they're probably a little tired. But uh, I really wanted to like this match. And... DiBiase wins by countout, keeps the belt, obviously. And, and yeah, and Jake chases Virgil to the back with Damien. Funny, we don't see Ted DiBiase leave, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, I believe this next one is a WrestleMania first as well. This next match is two former tag team partners facing off against each other. Uh, the big boss man, who the storyline is... Um, Ted DiBiase offered the Twin Towers money to go after Jake Roberts, and the bossman refused because we probably don't want to show a cop being paid off on TV. Makes sense. Uh, so the bossman was going up against Akeem, and after the bossman made his entrance, he's blindsided by Ted DiBiase. Ted DiBiase never left. It's kind of awesome, actually, because. You know, they, they show Jake chasing Virgil away, and then they cut away to the back. Well, we assume Ted DiBiase left, you know, walking back at the same time. Nope, DiBiase softens up the big boss, man. And it's actually pretty great. I'm sure it leads to a, a feud at SummerSlam 1990. I don't remember that card as well. But, yeah, uh, then Akeem goes to work on the boss man, but boss man kind of squashes him real quick with a boss man slam. And wins, but uh, yeah, and it, it's fun. I actually really dug it. It was unexpected, which is good. Um, and but again, boss man was talking about how he was proud to be an American and proud to be a law enforcement officer. I'm like, they have Mounties, and <laughs> believe me, we'll get to a boss man and Mountie much later. Probably not even at WrestleMania, because I think they may have only been in a multi-man tag match. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, The penultimate match 
is really kind of a it's a bathroom break let's be honest and it's a shame too because this is ravishing rick rude it's ravishing rick rude up against superfly jimmy snuka it should be great um but i think they know they're the bathroom break they know they're the match right before hogan and warrior and uh yeah oh i actually I'm, I'm sorry i'm looking at the wikipedia to run down the card i forgot about the whole rhythm and blues segment that was the real bathroom break, I believe. Rhythm and Blues came out to sing their new single, uh, A Hunka 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 Honky Love. I have that right. Uh, it also features the WrestleMania debut of Diamond Dallas Page. Now, you're, now for those of you who don't know, uh, DDP was a bit of a, a car aficionado. And... DDP had a pink Cadillac that the WWE rented from him, basically. So he drove down Rhythm and Blues to the ring. And they sang. It's a horrible song. The Bushwhackers interfere afterwards. There's a fight. That's it. There's no match. It's just fun. And DDP is there. So yay, DDP. You can barely see him. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's move on to the main event. The Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan. Uh, wow. It's a weird match. And I like it. I've, I don't know if it tops my favorite Hogan match yet. I don't think it tops Bundy. Because I really like that Bundy steel cage match. But it's damn close. It's really great. Um... It's kind of like watching a mirror match. It's weird because like both guys, you know, rely on the crowd very heavily. The crowd is so into this match. If you want to watch something fun, like I'm sure you've seen this match dozens of times. Watch this match again, but watch the crowd. The crowd sells this match so much. It's really, really fun. Um, And something I never picked up on. When I was younger, when I watched this the first time, they did not protect the Warriors finisher because Hulk Hogan kicked out of that and and started hulking up. But Hogan never hit the leg drop. Hogan never hits the leg drop in the match. He hits the three punches, the point, and the big boot. He never hits the leg drop. And I, I found that supremely interesting. Almost like they were building up towards a rematch. And I'm sure they probably were. I'm sure that was the plan. Uh, we never got that rematch. At least not in this company. Uh, but yeah. It, it's really kind of fun. To see that. Because the finish comes with. Hogan missing a leg drop. And Warrior hitting in our big. Uh, press, press splash. And Hogan kicking out. Just after three. Just after three, like 3.08 seconds. And uh, it it's a really interesting match. It really is. Like it's it's for two guys who don't have the greatest wrestling skill in the world, they tell a damn fine story. Uh, and that's what you should watch it for. The story the story in this is great. Story in this is great. It's fun watching two faces go at it because they both have to kind of cheat a little bit. And it's great. They even point that out in commentary. It's it's a really interesting match. Um, it, yeah, it's fun. Again, I don't know if it's my favorite Hogan match so far. I think that still has to go to WrestleMania 82. But this is, this is definitely number two. Definitely number two. All right. Um. So, yeah, I think that's it for WrestleMania 6. We will see you again when um, Hulk Hogan is defending America from Saddam Hussein. Obviously, as one does. Um, <laughs> WrestleMania 7. If you don't know it, well, you'll get to know it. Um, if you like these videos, feel, please feel free to leave some comments in the YouTube. Hit me up at MadMike483. Hit us up on the Twitter, on the Facebooks. All those places. If you have memories about these WrestleManias, please feel free to let me know. And, um, yeah, so 
Uh, we will see you all in Los Angeles next time on 32 Manias with Mike.